We have reacted to things all over the world. America, Nigeria, Jamaica, England, Germany, Austria, the list goes on. And you might wonder why we're doing this. Why are we reacting to things all over the world? Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, because it is in my blood to travel. Yes, I go everywhere. Why? Because of my ancestors. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, I am a Viking. Yes, I come from Denmark in Scandinavia. And what was Scandinavia back in the, what? 700s, 800s, that was Vikings. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going back in time. We're time traveling. We're going back to my place, back to my ancestors and hearing a little bit about where I'm from. So I hope you are going to enjoy this. I hope you got yourself something to drink, something to eat. Let's get straight into it. 793 in Linda's Farm Monarch. Definitely got to turn the the volume up let's see there we go let's take it back 793 in linda's farm monastery here is a little bit on fire it was set on fire by a group of raiders commonly known as vikings who saw the wealthy poorly defended monastery as easy pickings yep. which to be fair it was the raid on Lindisfarne is often considered to be the beginning of the period of European history known as the Viking Age, because hereafter the number of seaborne raids and the amount of Viking activity across Europe increased dramatically. So who were these Vikings? Well, they originated from Scandinavia, what is now Denmark, Norway and Sweden. Be yes. aware that these weren't a single group of people, they had different social and religious practices and were more than happy to raid each other when it was profitable. Speaking of raiding, Viking has become synonymous with raider, but it's important to note that many Vikings were simply seaborne traders and most stayed at home farming farming in scandinavia was a mixed bag and in the north of that's literally what we was we were traveling we were we were brutal we were really really brutal um we were raiders farmers and and just wanderers really like something that always kind of fascinated fascinated me about the vikings is they're We've been everywhere. Like there's been findings in the Middle East. There has been findings in America. There has been findings all over Europe. You got to think about how long ago this is. Like this is before the year 1000. It's really, really long ago. Uh, it's a really, really long time ago. You got to think about the ships back then. We, what we traveled with was, was a ship called a long ship which is like a wooden ship. Um, it was really, really good build. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but still, though, we traveled across some great, great oceans on a wooden ship. How is that possible? That is something that really, really fascinates me about the Vikings. That is actually a long ship right there on the screen. How did we travel from Denmark, Northern Europe, all the way to America on a wooden boat. That is crazy. Ah. Oh. Seaborne traders are most stayed at home farming. Farming in Scandinavia was a mixed bag, and in the north of the Viking territories, it was practically impossible because cold. Southern Denmark and parts of Norway and Sweden were actually quite good for farming, but population growth meant that other means, such as fishing, was needed for sustenance. The yep. difficult climate and terrain of Scandinavia also made governing the people there very difficult. Kings often ruled with a light touch, since commanding someone who was on an island, over a mountain, or on the other side of a dense forest wasn't that easy. That said, force was one of the primary ways of securing loyalty, along with rewarding followers with gifts. There were some areas in Scandinavia which were pretty good in terms of resources, and it was around these areas that power coalesced. The history of Scandinavia during the 9th century is shrouded in myth and legend, and frankly, there is very little that can be said as definite fact. Just a quick note on names too. Yeah, so like, the issue with, with Scandinavian people back in the day compared to a lot of the, I must say European, I feel like Scandinavia and Europe back then was two different things, but it wasn't. Um... So like in Central Europe and Western Europe and, and stuff like this, so like the, the UK as well, for example, I guess that is Northern Europe, Scotland is at least, but like everywhere else than Scandinavia, they were, they were extremely good at writing stuff down. 
certain events and yada 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 they wrote it down you can find scriptures and stuff like that like or scripts like going way 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 back in time now vikings didn't really they didn't report that much like they didn't write it down if that makes sense like we we didn't really think about oh well this has to be read by someone in the future at some point so they can like there, there wasn't too much about that uh or too much of that it's called sorry um my english i just woke up um yeah there wasn't too much of that so a lot of things there is obviously facts without a doubt but a lot of it is assumptions as well and guesses and trying to take other people's like scripts or whatever or journals and put them together to like kind of create an idea of what actually went down myth and legend and frankly there is very little that can be said as definite fact just a quick note on names too We'll be using the names Danish, Swedish and Norse Norwegian, but be aware that the borders in Scandinavia weren't settled and that people simply lived wherever was habitable. Anyway, in the 9th century Norway, named after the sea route along its coast, the Northern Way, was a land of many petty kingdoms who rose and fell as they vied for dominance. That is, until a certain king, Harold Fairhair, shows up around yeah. 872, but again, no one knows for sure. It was he who established a power base over the course of a few decades, gained overlordship over the north, and then defeated a confederation of petty kings at the Battle of Hafersfjord. And it was after his victory that Harold declared himself to be the first king of the Norwegians. In what is now Denmark, the 9th century isn't much clearer and actually the name Denmark wasn't used until about the year 930. It is known though from the records of the Frankish Empire of Charlemagne that some of the lords who lived there wielded a great deal of power and that the Danes were noted fighters. In Sweden, named after the Svear people who lived here, there is loads of evidence about what happened down to the tiniest minutiae. Oh wait, no there isn't. What can be said for sure though is that the people that lived there lived mostly in these areas and that the Svear made a great deal of contact with their neighbours across the Baltic Sea. Also, shockingly, okay. it was divided into petty kingdoms. It's also known that the Swedes made regular contact with the Sami people from the north, and it's likely that some of their religious practices were adopted from them. So whilst not a great deal is known about Scandinavia itself during this period, the people from there certainly made an impact in other places. The 9th century saw widespread raiding across Western Europe, such as those on Francia between 840 and 850. The Franks fortified their coasts and rivers, which forced the Vikings to turn their attention elsewhere to the British Isles. The British Isles had been subject to Viking raids throughout most of the 9th century, and its yeah. wealth attracted many, mostly from Denmark, to come and take it. The 860s saw the landing of the Great Heathen Army in Britain, which devastated many of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms there and made a lot of money doing so. The Norse, those from Norway, raided their way across the northern and western coasts of Scotland and ended up at the island of Ireland, where they did yet more raiding. The reasons behind Viking raiding are fiercely debated and reigned to all my UK watchers, I'm 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 really sorry. I'm 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 really really sorry for what my ancestors have done, because we were giving the UK a hard time. We really really were giving them a hard time. I'm I'm very sorry about that. It's in the past. Don't don't blame us T today. I'm sorry from a lack of arable land back home to cope with population growth to honour-based or semi-religious reasons, more on that in a bit. The great heathen army soon changed from one of raiding to one of conquest, and in short time they conquered and settled this area, subsequently called the Dane Law. The Norse yeah. conquered most of the Northern Islands across the British Isles, and also settled places like Dublin and Cork, which soon became important slave trading hubs. To the north lay the uninhabited island of Iceland. Iceland was settled by a man called Ingolfa Anarsson, who settled Reykjavik in 874, and unlike the rest of Europe, no one lived there, and so settlement was done with Without violence. The Norse also settled the Faroe Islands here, but no one knows when for sure. Expansion wasn't limited to the west or to the north. The east also saw a great deal of Viking, mostly Swedish, activity. The Vikings moved south, settling, raiding and trading until they came to the Black Sea and made contact with a very wealthy Byzantine Empire. There's a lot of like, look at that. Wait, trading until they came to the Black Sea and made contact with a very wealthy Byzantine Empire. Look at that. Denmark is up there in the top, like right under the title of the video. Up there is Denmark. And we were all the way down there. You got to think about Sweden and Norway is even further up. That is far away. That is really, really far away. Like that right there is, is Greece and... Is some of it Turkey? I'm not sure. Nah... It's definitely Greece. I, I'm actually not. That's pretty bad. I should know what the other uh, side of it is. But but that is so far. We got like Sicily as well. Parts of Italy. Oh, crazy. Crazy how we, how we did that. 
Byzantine Empire. There's a lot of questions concerning the manner of Scandinavian settlement in Eastern Europe and to what extent they dominated the region. However, they were definitely deeply involved in the politics of the area and it made the Vikings there very wealthy. The Vikings brought great change with them to the places they settled. Generally speaking, the Vikings were much more urbanised and they expanded major settlements like York, Dublin and Kiev which became deeply intertwined with European trade. The social changes they brought with them varied depending on the region but the primary area of conflict between the Vikings and those they conquered was that of religion. So the Viking religion was a form of Germanic paganism and is extremely complicated. There were many yeah. gods and not all Vikings worshipped the same gods. There were also the Norns who determined a person's unchangeable destiny and this idea of a set fate was extremely important. For example, if you were destined to die in combat, you would ideally go forth looking for combat to approach your fate bravely. Chris yeah, so like Valhalla is like northern mythology's heaven. That is what it is. Like, so Christians had heaven and we had Valhalla. And if you would go into battle and die fighting bravely, you would go to Valhalla. And that is also why, because if you see like the armor and stuff like that, Central Europe and England and stuff like that, like the, the armor they had, their soldiers looked way more like advanced than we did. We looked like peasants as well. Like we really, really looked like peasants. But what made us so dangerous was the fact that Christians did not want to die. They were afraid of death. Whereas we wanted to die. It would be an honor for us dying in battle. So we would be crazy. Like the the morale of, of the armies that we, we fought would just be annihilated. Because they would fear when they see like a group of people who doesn't even have that good armor on. Like looks like peasants come and like imagine that 2000 people running towards you with axes screaming their lungs out with not the slightest like sign of fear that must be terrifying and that's actually what what like made us like what made us able to conquer a lot of these places was the fact that we did not fear death that just, that did a lot for Vikings. Christians had attempted to convert people, ideally go forth looking for combat to approach your fate bravely. Christians had attempted to convert people in Scandinavia for centuries by this point, yeah. ultimately to no avail. In fact, many Vikings recognized <laughs> Scandinavia for centuries by this Love point. Love that picture. Except Jesus. Nah. <laughs> Obviously, for those of y'all who don't know about this, this history, we are a Christian country today. They did succeed. Um, we do not believe in, in Northern mythology anymore. Obviously, some people do, and all respect for them. But uh, but no, we Denmark and Norway and Sweden, like Scandinavia, is a Christian. It, it is Christian countries. Ultimately, to no avail. In fact, many Vikings recognized the Christian desire to convert them and went along with it for political gain. One such example was Rollo, who in 911 after true rollo who in the series of vikings if you haven't seen it it's on netflix it's a great series is the brother of uh, ragnar lothbrok that is incorrect by the way they there's nothing that shows that they would be related in in real life but but there is stories of him being baptized in in england um out of political reasons after raiding Frankie, went along with it for political gain. One such example was Rollo, who in 911, after raiding Frankia, was given this land in Normandy, which was probably the land he was occupying. He was officially given it on two conditions, prevent raiding from other Vikings, and of course, be baptized. For many Vikings, baptism was as- Oh, I actually, I thought he was baptized in, uh, in England. Apparently it was in France sincere act of conversion and for others it was just a thing christians wanted you to do after they paid you off in fact some vikings complained that the baptism they were just given wasn't as nice as their last one so back in norway things were starting to heat up harold fairhair died around 9 30 his kingdom fell apart and what remained went to his son eric the first better known as eric bloodaxe he was kicked out in 933 by his brother the new king hakon also known as hakon the good and eric went off to rule dublin and northumbria hakon was as his name suggests a pretty good king and sought to strengthen his realm he was also a christian and attempted to convert his subjects but once he realized they were pretty annoyed with the whole jesus thing he himself went back to worshiping the norse gods by the mid-10th century denmark was still divided into many kingdoms and it was this one the kingdom of jutland 
which was ruled by a man called Gorm the Old. Gorm being old. Jutland, which would be, and still to this day, is called Jutland. In Danish, it's called Jutland. Is the, the red big piece, like big chunk of Danish soil you see right there. That's actually where I'm from. Uh, I'm from that big red piece there, or big red chunk of... My eye is itching so much. As I said, I just woke up. Um, yeah, that's where I'm from. I don't live there anymore. I live in Austria now. But when I did, when I did live in Denmark, that's where I'm from. Born and raised. Many kingdoms, and it was this one, the Kingdom of Jutland, which there. was ruled by a man called Gorm the Old. Gorm, yeah. being old, died in 958 and was succeeded by his son, Harold, better known as Harold Bluetooth. Harold would... Did you know that because of this king, we call him Harald Blotten, which means Harald Bluetooth? This is why Bluetooth is called Bluetooth today. That is from him. Thanks. ...would go on to conquer the entirety of the now gormless Denmark, which is one of the reasons he's so famous. The other is that he converted to Christianity. This was after he attempted to raid the Holy Roman Empire under Otto I in 960. Harold lost and thus was made to convert, but be aware that there were already many Christians in Denmark, such as those who had returned from the Dane law. So one thing you'll have noticed throughout this episode is that I keep saying how we don't know much for certain. So how do you know anything about the period? The primary sources are often from outside of Scandinavia, like... Yeah, that's what I, that's what I said as well, like... A lot of Viking history actually comes from other people's writings and not from our own. Those from England or Francia, but there are two important Scandinavian sources. The first were the gelling stones, which were inscribed stones which were made... Ooh, sorry that I'm pausing it so much, but these are actual Viking uh, stones with like runes on them. They're still standing today. I have obviously seen them. If you ever go to Denmark and you're interested in history, I would definitely advise you to go see them they are in Yulan as well so Jutland where I'm from and uh, that it's crazy they're still standing there is however some people who finds it funny to throw paint on them which is just said just like it doesn't matter if it's Scandinavia or wherever in the world leave history be just let history be history do not touch it do not paint on it do not spray graffiti on it don't just leave it alone Made at Jelling, the old capital of Jutland. The major ones were made by Harold Bluetooth to celebrate both the unification of Denmark and its conversion to Christianity. Look, that B you see on top of the of the stone there behind him, that's that's the Bluetooth logo. That's the logo of Bluetooth. It's crazy. Major ones were made by Harold Bluetooth to celebrate both the unification of Denmark and its conversion to Christianity. The other source is the sagas, mostly from Iceland, which were narrative stories written hundreds of years after the events they spoke of. Hence why half of what is written in the sagas is seen as semi-legendary and not strictly trustworthy. So back to Denmark, the rest of Harold's reign did see him depose King Hakon the Good and replace him with his nephew, Harold Greycloak. Greycloak did basically nothing except die in 917, <laughs> so Harold declared himself to be the King of Norway too. This would mark the high point of Harold's reign, since in 986 he was deposed by his son, Swain Forkbeard. Swain Forkbeard's reign is frankly a bit of a mystery. After taking the throne, he appears to have either raided England and Scotland for about a decade or was exiled there by his nobles and the Swedish king, Eric the Victorious. In 995, he appears to have lost Norway to Olaf Tryggvason, who undertook converting it to Christianity with some success. Slightly after this, the Swedish king Olaf Skutkanung would do the same thing in his realm. Again, the problem with Swedish history at this point is that nobody can say for sure what was going on. It's pretty certain that the Sverre had conquered the Geats to the south, but their northern borders are basically unknown. Up in Iceland, a man called Eric the Red was banished for manslaughter in the late 10th century. Shortly after... Iceland? That is interesting, because I'm pretty sure that Eric the Red was king of Denmark. At least that's what we're being told in Denmark, that Eric the Red was, in fact, the king of Denmark. Interesting. Afterwards, he stumbled across and then settled Greenland. Eric's son, Leifur Eriksson, would then in the year 1001 discover North America. So take that, Columbus. Crazy. There were some temporary settlements so in North that, America. One discover North America. So take that, Columbus. There were some temporary settlements in North America, but for some reason they didn't last. And thus, North America wouldn't see European contact again for nearly half a millennium. I will say, when he says discover North America, it's obviously like, we thought we were the first one. Obviously, you had people like Nephi and, and his uh, family that came way, 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 way um, earlier. We came way, 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 way later than them, and we never settled down. So we were not the first to set foot on American soil. 
but we were the first in Europe, correct me if I'm wrong, to discover America. And they didn't last. And thus North America wouldn't see European contact again for nearly half a millennium. Swain would at some point return to Denmark, and after the death of Tryggvason in the year 1000, he reclaimed Norway. He went back and forth raiding England for many years, and in 1013 he managed to seize it for himself and become king there, thus beginning England's royal house of Denmark. He died the next year, and his son Canute would begin his rule in England two years later. By 1028, Canute ruled all of these lands, now known as the North Sea Empire. Canute died in 1035, and his kingdoms were divided and fighting broke out. The kingship of Canute would be used by his descendant, the King of Norway, Harald Hardrada, who in 1066 landed in Northumbria with the intent to take England's crown for himself. This went pretty well for his enemy, since Hardrada got himself killed. 1066 and the death of Harald Hardrada is considered by many to mark the end of the Viking Age. The reason for this is largely because the Viking nations were a part of the Christian world and were no longer able to raid with impunity or even defeat their enemies. Denmark, Sweden and Norway were Christian kingdoms just like any other and so there were rules. You couldn't simply take a kingdom now just because you wanted it. You couldn't turn up and raid, murder or enslave your fellow Christians anymore. That's not to say that nobody from these places ever raided again. They did and the Norwegian holdings in the British Isles would remain theirs until the 15th century. The legacy okay. of the Viking Age Age is extremely far-reaching. This period did not settle the issue of Scandinavian borders, but it taught the rest of Europe that Scandinavia was not something it could ignore anymore. Obviously, one legacy is that it spread the Scandinavian culture to the Faroe Islands, Iceland and Greenland. They changed language and the politics of much of Western Europe, and whilst Hardrada had failed to subdue England, it was William, the great-great-great-grandson of Rollo, who would conquer it immediately afterwards. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Thomas Gestrich, Adam Harvey, Winston K. Wood, and Yeah, that is... That is crazy. I missed a little bit of background music here, like dramatize it a little bit. But yeah, there's way more to it. It's interesting to me that uh, Ragna um, was not mentioned. Because uh, if you have watched Vikings and, and you're thinking, I wonder if he was real or fictionary. He was real. Like Ragnar Lothbrok is, was the first Danish... Saunekong, something something king, I don't know what Saun is, and was indeed a, a very real person, and there is a lot of stories about him as well. But yeah, Viking history, this is this is my ancestors. I am indeed a Viking. And and yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you do enjoy these like 10 minute history things, like these history reactions, let me know in the comments. Make sure you hit the like button and hey, I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know something interesting about your country's history in the comments. I love history. I'm a sucker for it. So I would love to hear about yours as well. Yeah. If this wasn't for you or if you're just like, oh, I would like to see more, then don't worry. Right next to me up there, there's another video for, video for you waiting. And what I'm going to do now is go brush my teeth and get some breakfast because I just woke up. See you over there. Bye.